Big Pharma is something that is uh, probably one of your biggest enemies, if not your biggest enemy. When you said they're not going to endorse me, of course they're not going to endorse you because you've, uh, you've kind of gone in their way, you've called them out. Uh, uh, I remember I got a strike for one of the interviews we did with you, by the way, years ago when we had you on. Do you remember that when we... I apologize. Uh, it's totally fine. It was worth it. It was a great conversation that You're we had. You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, but where I'm going with this is the following. Here's my concern. Uh, I think three things are keeping cable TV in business. One uh, are your friends, the boomers, okay? Two is big pharma, and three is sports. A lot of sports teams are going away, and they're saying, hey, you can watch us on our own OTT. You don't need to go to NBC or whatever to watch it. You can come to us. Baby boomers, just a matter of time. And the third one keeping cable in business is big pharma. Around $5.7 billion big pharma gave to cable TV in 20. 22. Now, two countries in the world are the only countries where Big Pharma can advertise in. It's us and it's uh, New Zealand, right? Um, I'm having this conversation with Vivek back there in the Cigar Lounge uh, uh, about a month ago on his podcast. And I said, why are we allowing Big Pharma to advertise? And they're almost forcing all these mainstream media talking heads that are reading a teleprompter to do whatever they tell them to do because if you don't, you're not going to get the money and all this stuff. They're pretty much puppets for them. And that's, not, that's, not a, that's a reality when you're seeing it. That's their job. That's who pays them their millions of dollars per year. And I said, why, why are we allowing big farmer to advertise? Well, this is because capitalism. So if somebody can come and says, what if a car, you can kill people with cars? Are we going to ban cars? I said, but why do we ban cigarettes? You can buy cigarettes, but you don't see ads on TV. You don't see Marlboro. You don't see Winston. Why don't we ban Big Pharma from advertising. 195 countries in the world, only two of them a lot, we're one of them. Are you someone that you know, has the courage or thinks it's a good idea if in the day you become a president where you will prevent Big Pharma from advertising on cable TV? Uh, the answer to that is yes, I'll do that on day one. But if, uh, let day me one. Ask, well, well, let, well I'll, I'll explain how it works. Okay. Let me ask you something, what did, what did Vivek say? Vivek said, let me go research it. And I'm on, a, I'm on a thing, but he said it's a very good idea. I said, the reason why I think you ought to think about it is because his background as well. And that conversation led to, I gotta go do more due diligence. While we're doing the interview, we're checking what companies cannot advertise. And the one we yeah. found is tobacco. Well, you know, my dad actually got, uh, got uh, cigarette ads off of TV and, um, and, and got liquor ads off of TV. If you remember, Ten years ago, even you never saw liquor ad on TV. That's recent that you're seeing that they, on on the on the network news, the liquor companies. My father actually threatened uh, had legislation to ban them, and they came to him and said, "Look, don't ban us. We will just stop doing it. We won't advertise on TV." So, um, gradually, you got it. So there were beer, beer ads on TV. But hard liquor companies did not advertise on TV probably till 10 or 15 years ago. I don't know exactly when they, mm -hmm. but I remember when they, you started seeing vodka ads and then, you know, more and more stuff. And it was on cable TV. It was not on networks. It was not on ABC, NBC, CBS, because the public actually owns the network, owns those airwaves. The, uh, the companies that, you know, the broadcasters have a license to use them but they have to use them in ways that promote the public interest. And it was, it was regarded at that time that direct-to-consumer advertisement was bad. Everybody agreed with that. The American Medical Association, everybody agreed. You, you, we should not be doing direct-to-consumer advertising pharmaceutical. That changed in 1997. So that's when you started seeing this wave of pharmaceutical ads on TV and, of course, that the pharmaceutical companies want to advertise on the network news for two reasons. One is because, it, because that's where their customers are. The only people, as I said, who watch network news are old people, and those are people who are buying the pharmaceutical drugs. Right? And, then the, um, and the other reason is because it allows them to control content. Oh, and you know, other companies do this too, like you'll see you know, Northrop Grumman and Raytheon and Lockheed, you know, I, I saw an ad the other day, I think it was on Good Morning America, it was one of the big, where they were advertising killer drones. And I was like, who watching this show is buying killer drones? 
Of course, nobody is, but it allows them to control the content and to get their, you know, the, the, all the former generals who, who act as experts on the, on the mainstream media and are constantly telling the war narrative and getting us, you know, so they, that's one of the reasons they do it. And Pharma, um, in 20, I think it was 20, yeah, 2014, I had a conversation with Roger Ailes. Do you guys know who Roger Ailes is? Raise your hand if you know who he is. Uh, so most of you do. Roger Ailes was the founder of Fox News. And I spent, when I was 18 years old, or 19 years old, I spent three months in a tent with him in East Africa. And that's a long story. Uh, but I remained friends with him. This is before Fox News existed. I remained friends with him, and he later started Fox News. And for me, ideologically, he was like Darth Vader. But well, our friendship, we had a, a very, very close friendship, even though we were politically, diametrically opposed to each other. And he would put me on, I, you know, I was always uh, fighting for the environment. I was the, the leading environmental mm -hmm. lawyer and advocate in the country. I was the only environmentalist who went on Fox News. One, because the other ones didn't want to do it, but also Roger would make Sean Hannity and Neil Cavuto and Bill O'Reilly and all of his hosts put me on, even though he didn't agree with what I was saying. And so I did in 2014, I did a, a, a documentary with some other people about mercury and vaccines. And I went to Roger Ailes, I showed it to him. And he said, yeah, you know, and he, in fact, he believed that one of, that a relative of his had been injured, was, you know, was severely injured. But he said, I can't let you on with that. And he said, in fact, if any of my hosts allowed you onto their shows, I would have to fire them. Really? And, and, yeah, and he said, if I didn't, I remember this, this is a quote. He said, if I didn't fire them, I would, I would have Rupert, I, which he meant Rupert Murdoch, the owner of the sure. network, on the telephone within 10 minutes. And then he said to me, 75% of the advertising revenues for our evening news show are coming from pharma. And he said, out of typically 22 to 24 news, shot, wow. news slots, I mean advertising slots on the evening news, 17 are going to pharmaceutical companies. And so he said, you know, and I've seen time and time again where hosts are, are you know, get calls from the corporate and from the bean counters who are doing the advertising where news hosts get that and say, you know, that, that, that segment I just taped with you, we can't play it because our advertisers are telling us not to. And I can recite stories like that with names and dates all day. I've written about it, but you know, that it is the reality that the pharmaceutical industry, um, that the people like Anderson Cooper, like uh, Jake Tapper, are really uh, are pharmaceutical reps. You know, their job is to drum up fear of infectious disease and, uh, and stories about chronic disease and then to sell pharmaceutical advertising on TV. And if you, you know, their salaries ultimately, not directly, but ultimately are coming from uh, the pharmaceutical industry it largely. Would be, it would be very funny if, if somebody at CNN who's an editor, I'm not trying to give anybody any ideas, or maybe if they're a fan of RFK, while Anderson Cooper is doing it on the bottom, instead of saying host, he says, you know, pharmaceutical rep for <laughs> Pfizer. It'd be very entertaining. So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here.